Hello, this is Hydatech. 5th of September 2012. The time now is 1800 hours UK time. The purpose of this video is to give a short and quick update with regard to the work that I'm doing on the coil driver boards for this Muller motor we see here. Before I start, I'd just like to apologize in advance for the shaky camera. This is because it's the first time I'm actually using the videoing facility on my mobile phone and who knows, it might actually have a useful purpose after all. That said, I'd just like to give a very brief description of what I'm testing here. I am testing a coil. This coil here, which I've previously referred to as coil number zero at TDC on the Muller motor. The coil inductance has been measured at 70 microhenries. That's 70 microhenries. Now, over here, we're looking at the benchtop power supply that I'm using, and we could see it's currently putting out 15 volts at an unreadable amperage. Because of that low amperage, I've got it hooked up to this multimeter here, and we could see it's currently putting out around 140 milliamps to the experimental coal driver. That's the junk at the back, which is the main machinery that will allow me to control the Muller motor eventually. Now, over here, we can see one of two oscilloscopes. This is a DSO showing two waveforms, a blue one and a red one. The top one, the blue one, is that of the voltage presented at the gate of the MOSFET. It also happens to be the voltage that the MOSFET conducts to the coil when it is conducting. So here we see that the MOSFET is conducting for one millisecond and after one millisecond it's not conducting at all. Incidentally the pulse period is 50 milliseconds with an on time of one millisecond giving a two percent duty cycle. So of the 50 millisecond pulse period this oscilloscope is only showing the first two milliseconds. Now, remember this is 15 volts presented to the gate, turning the MOSFET on and thus allowing it to conduct. Whilst it is conducting, the voltage, 15 volts, presented to the coil is reduced to about 6 volts. It peaks at around 9 to 10 volts. That's the voltage that the MOSFET actually conducts to the coil and is reduced from 15 volts due to losses. That is not important at this time. The thing to look at is what happens here at the point from which the MOSFET no longer conducts because here in this red waveform we are seeing the waveform of the collapsing magnetic field of the coil. Okay, Because this oscilloscope has a limitation of plus or minus 20 volts on the input, as we see here, it will clip the waveform there. Unfortunately, I really want to know what's happening beyond that point. And because of this, I'm using a second oscilloscope down here. And this scope has the same settings as the oscilloscope we were looking at a moment ago, but its vertical scale is set to 20 volts per division. And therefore, we could see from that that it's peaking at just over 80 volts. 
that 80 volts is too close for comfort to the 100 volt probe protection on the other oscilloscope so I have to watch what I'm doing and be careful but because the more interesting part of this waveform is what's happening after the first millisecond I will set the trigger rising edge level so that it picks up on the leading edge of this waveform here. I'll do that now. It's only a small adjustment on the scope. There we go. And I will expand that. Let me just adjust that a bit more. I'll expand that. Currently it's at 0.2 milliseconds. That's 0.1 milliseconds, and that's 50 microseconds, right there. We see a nice clean waveform. But that in itself is not that interesting. What is interesting is what happens when I make a very, very small alteration to the circuit, which I'll do now. And I'd ask you to observe what's happening over on this side here on the waveform showing the collapsing magnetic field of the coil. I'll make that adjustment now. This is where it starts to get interesting. First, the voltage presented to the gate and the voltage that the MOSFET eventually conducts, there's no changes there. However, the voltage that the MOSFET conducts to the coil has risen to a regular 8 volts now from 6 with a marginal peak of about half a volt there. Once more, that's not very important. What is worth looking at is what's happening here. Remember here, from this point onwards, the MOSFET is not conducting. But now, the voltage that we're getting is a constant 20 volts. So, in one sense, we could say, okay, 15 volts in for one millisecond equates to 20 volts out for one millisecond. But the question now arises, how long does that 20 volts go on? At what point does this waveform hit or at least approach zero volts. To do that we'll zoom out to try and capture the well we are capturing the whole waveform but let's let us try and see the whole waveform. We'll do that now with my left hand, I'm right handed so bear with me. I'll go down to one millisecond per division. So after 10 milliseconds, it's at around 16 volts. Go down to 5 milliseconds per division. That will allow us to see the entire pulse period from beginning to end. Remember, it's 50 millisecond pulse period. And we see at the end here that it's still not at 0 volts. We'll capture two complete pulses by selecting 10 milliseconds per division and we can see that it doesn't hit zero volts. We can see clearly where the MOSFET is made to conduct for one millisecond yet for the remaining 49 millisecond the waveform on the coil I feel is very interesting. This is where the coil is actually pulsed and then onwards is where the charge on the coil decays, but it does not decay down to zero volts. Okay, that's what I wanted to, to show for the time being. I'd like you to remember that this is not some sort of proof of anything in particular. It's certainly not over unity or anything like that. But without a doubt, it is a tool that I will be using 
to tackle that subject because this is just one of 15 coils. Remember, there are 15 coils here. We're just testing one. That's the first thing. The second thing is the benchtop power supply is used for test purposes to pulse this one coil. But it will not be used to pulse any other coil. The voltage required to pulse other coils will be self-generated through means I will reveal at a later date. There is a second reason why I am using a second oscilloscope, of course, and that is to try and at least get some kind of normality out, out of the readings that I get from the scopes. They need to be the same. I'm not going to, or, or I am attempting not to fall into the trap of using equipment that is giving false readings. At least if I use two oscilloscopes, the chances are somewhat slimmer that both would be malfunctioning at exactly the same point. So one will substantiate the other. Anyway, I hope to catch up with you guys tomorrow at the Smart Scarecrow Show, and I look forward to uh, chatting with you then. Until then, take care of yourselves.